in the previous lecture we discussed about uh, CISO that is single input single output system in which uh, one excitation is uh, on the single degree freedom system and uh, there is one output and for that we obtain the necessary relationships and in that also uh, we discussed uh, several things like uh, what is the relationship that exists between the power spectral density function of velocity with the power spectral density function of displacement, then power spectral density of acceleration with power spectral density function of displacement and so on. Now, before we start uh, the multi degree of freedom system in which we will have a, a number of inputs to the system and there will be a number of outputs uh, to the from the system uh, and the uh, inputs would be represented in terms of a vector and outputs will be also a vector and as we discussed last time when we have a number of uh, random processes uh, in a particular vector then the process is described uh, with the help of the power spectral density function matrix rather than a single power spectral density function. Uh, Let us try to recapitulate some of those fundamental things that we uh, discussed in yesterday's lecture uh, so that uh, we can um, effectively understand the MDOF system. Uh, subjected to a random excitation vector. Uh, first thing that we uh, discussed yesterday was y is equal to a into x where y is a vector, x is a vector and it is connected through a matrix A. In that case S y y will be a power spectral density function matrix and SXX is the power spectral density fun function matrix, SYY will be related to SXX uh, with the help of this equation. SXY that is the cross power spectral density function between the output and input that is SXY is will be equal to a into SXX. Now, if we consider a multi degree freedom system, then the we can write down the equation of motion and if P t is the excitation vector, then one can obtain the relationship between the frequency contents of the response vector to the frequency content of the excitation with the help of a FRF that is frequency response function matrix H omega and this H omega is equal to K minus M omega square plus I C omega inverse of that. That is what we discussed yesterday. Therefore, x omega can be written as x omega equal to h omega multiplied by p omega, where p omega is the frequency contents of the force vector p t. In case of single degree of freedom system, this h omega matrix is written as small h omega that is a single quantity which is uh, a called also the uh, FRF that is frequency response function of a single degree freedom system. Now, SXX and SYY these matrices uh, say for example, if it is a vector of size 2 then 
this uh, will be the nature of the power spectral density function matrix. The diagonal terms are the power spectral density functions of x1 and x2 and the off diagonal terms would represent the cross power spectral density function between x2 and x1 and this will be between x1 and x2. If we have a more number of, of elements in the vector uh, then obviously we will have x1, x1, x2, x1, x3, x1 so on. This will be the cross power spectral density function between different responses. And this relationship also was shown that is x1, x2 cross power spectral density function between x1 and x2 is equal to the complex conjugate of the cross power spectral density function between x2 and x1. In the uh, in, in case of the matrix that means if it is not a single power spectral density function, if this is a matrix then the relationship is S x1 x2 will be equal to x x2 x1 complex conjugate and transpose of that. So, that is the difference between the single uh, quantity as the cross power spectral density function and the uh, Sx1, Xx2 or the cross power spectral density function and, uh, uh, between x1 and x2. In that case x1 and x2 will be the two vectors. Now the diagonal terms of the power spectral density function matrix are real and uh, they are frequency dependent and generally we do not write omega in front of it, but it is understood that for each frequency we have a matrix like this. Therefore, as we go on varying the frequency, then we have for each frequency one matrix like this. Now, with the help of uh, this, we, we would now uh, go into uh, the multi degree of freedom system uh, and uh, in the previous uh, lecture also uh, we had shown that x omega is equal to h omega into p omega uh, that they are all complex numbers, p omega is obtained from first Fourier transform and Sxx the power spectral density function of the response is equal to absolute value square uh, of h omega into the power spectral density function of uh, p. Now, this can, can also be written as h omega into spp into h omega star because this multiplied by this becomes equal to the absolute value square. And the cross power spectral density between the response uh, between the force and the response is equal to h omega spp. Apart from that we also had proved in the previous lecture that the power spectral density function of velocity uh, is equal to omega times the power spectral density function of displacement and power spectral density function uh, of acceleration is equal to omega to the power 4 into the power spectral density function uh, of displacement. Now, in case when the, uh, this x dot and x they are vectors, then they are matrices and the power spectral density matrix of velocity is related to the power spectral density function of displacement again through this relationship only thing that this changes to matrices. Also uh, we had proved that S x x dot plus S x dot x is equal to 0 
that is the cross power spectral density function between the velocity and displacement uh, that if uh, that uh, if it comes into the uh, solution or analysis then the uh, we ignore that that means we set uh, that to equal to 0 because of this reason. Similarly, if uh, the velocity and acceleration for that if we have a cross power spectral density function or cross power spectral density matrix then we ignore that because of this reason that uh, this plus this that becomes equal to 0. And also uh, we had seen that S x y is equal to S y x star t that is the complex conjugate of this and transpose of that. So, with these uh, few um, things that we described in the previous uh, lecture, we come into the response of a multi degree freedom system excited by a force vector p t. Now, for single point excitation, we know that the force vector p t is equal to minus m into i into x double dot g, where i is a influence coefficient vector consisting of 1 1 1 or 1 0 1 0 1 0 uh, and so on that you have seen uh, in the case of uh, the deterministic analysis x omega we can write down to be equal to h omega matrix multiplied by p omega that is what we have just discussed uh, where h omega is the power, uh, frequency response function matrix for the system multi degree of freedom system and p omega is the frequency content and uh, vector of the excitation p t and x omega is the frequency uh, contents of the response. Now, if uh, this relationship holds good, then from the just discussion that we had, uh, from that we can write down the power spectral density function of SXX that is the power spectral density function matrix of X is equal to H omega matrix multiplied by the um, SPP matrix that is the power spectral density function of the excitation into H omega star t. In the case of the single degree freedom system if you recall we had uh, we could write it as small h omega multiplied by SPP multiplied by small h omega star and h omega star small h omega star and this h omega if we multiply that becomes the absolute value square of h omega square. If h omega is a matrix then we have to uh, make it a transpose of the complex conjugate uh, of the matrix h omega. So, then only it will become the absolute value square. So, this is a standard relationship that we use uh, for the case of a multi degree of freedom system what you have to simply do is that you have to find out the FRF that is the frequency response function matrix for the system which is equal to k minus m omega square plus i c omega and inverse of this matrix if you uh, take at every frequency then you get h omega at every frequency and SPP at every frequency is known. So, you have to carry out this matrix multiplication and in the and from that you will get the value of the power spectral density function matrix at each value of omega. Now, in case of the single point excitation system SPP uh, that turns out to be uh, m i into i t m t into x uh, uh, sx double dot g and these uh, follows from this relationship that is uh, p t is equal to minus m i x double dot g 
and therefore if we wish to write down the value of SPP then it will be Mi into Sx double dot G multiplied by the IT MT that is A Sx AT that what we have uh, discussed uh, just now. So, using that one can write down the SPP that is it will be Mi into ITMT in, in place of uh, writing ITMT on this side we have uh, taken it on this side because SX double dot G is a single quantity uh, in the case of the single point excitation. So, therefore, uh, whether we keep ITMT on this side of SX double dot G or in this uh, or in this side it does not matter. Now, uh, with the help of uh, this uh, relationship that we obtain for SPP, the SXX that is power spectral density function matrix of the response can be uh, written in this particular form that is HM i then i t m t h star t into x double dot g where x double dot g is the power spectral density function of the ground motion. So, it is a, a single quantity at each frequency and uh, the cross power spectral density function between the uh, ground acceleration and the displacement that will be equal to minus h m i x double dot g and that follows from uh, the equation that again uh, we just examined that is s x s x output input correlation uh, is equal to a into s x. So, in place of s a we write down here now h m i. So, that is that becomes the pre multiplier for the S x double dot g. Now, using uh, these relationships a problem is solved and this problem was uh, the problem uh, in which we had uh, two responses at the or non support degrees of responses the problem is uh, I think the problem is this was the problem and that is uh, we had u 1 and u 2 as the displacements and we had uh, 3 uh, ground excitations and in this case all the three ground excitations are assumed to be the same and therefore, uh, we uh, had a R matrix that is uh, in, in place of R matrix we had only a I matrix. So, uh, so, this is the I matrix you can see here the I matrix is equal to I uh, 1 1 that uh, this is because of the fact that the ground excitations at the three supports are assumed to be the same uh, they are not different. Therefore, the, the I influence coefficient vector will be equal to 1 and 1. So, we know the mass matrix we can construct the C matrix from the relationship that is alpha m plus beta k and alpha and beta can be obtained from the two frequencies uh, that you have obtained. So, with the help of that the alpha value had become 0.816 and the beta value is 0 0.0027. Uh, this is the k matrix and from there we can obtain for each frequency uh, the h matrix that is by inverting uh, this matrix and uh, obtain the value of the 
cos spectral density function matrix of the two displacements uh, using the previous equation. And the diagonal terms of the power spectral density function matrix that is the PSDFs of the two displacements. So, that is what is shown here in the plot. You can see that it is the power spectral density function ordinates for displacement u1 and uh, uh, this is the frequency and that is how uh, uh, the PSDF. Uh, of the displacement u1 varies with frequency and one can see that this is uh, peaking uh, nearly uh, at about 12.5 and uh, the first frequency of the system is 12.25. So, therefore, we see that there is a uh, the peak of the power spectral density function of uh, displacement u1 is around that frequency. Uh, this is the power spectral density function of the displacement u2. These uh, area under the curve of this power spectral density function uh, of u1 and u2, they provide the variance and the square root of variance gives the uh, standard deviation of the displacement and in case of zero mean process the standard deviation is equal to the root mean square value. So, the root mean square value of u 1 is 0 0.0154 and the root mean square value of the displacement and 2 or u 2 is 0 0.0078. Now, when you consider the multipoint excitation system, uh, then uh, the uh, S this is uh, this is S x x, this is not S x double dot g, it is uh, wrongly uh, written over here. It will be S x x that is the power spectral density function of uh, matrix of the response is equal to now H m in place of r now we have got in place of i we have got now r. So, h m r x double dot g is a matrix now is not a single quantity because uh, the size of the uh, matrix would depend upon the number of the point of excitations and uh, it is uh, multiplied on the right hand side by r t m t and h star t. So, that is the general relationship between the uh, displacement and the excitation. Displacement is a vector, the force is a vector and therefore, the uh, this is a matrix of displacement and this is a matrix of the or power spectral density function matrix of excitation. And R is the influence coefficient matrix that we had discussed uh, when we are solving the problem for uh, the uh, multi degree of freedom system subjected to the deterministic ground motions. Uh, which cause uh, different excitations at different supports because of the time lag. S x double dot g x that is the cross power spectral density between uh, the excitation and the displacement is uh, given by this uh, expression again and uh, here S x double dot g again is a matrix. The size of this S x double dot g matrix is S into S, uh, if S is the number of support and R is uh, a influence coefficient matrix that is obtained from a static analysis of the system that we have uh, uh, seen before uh, is of the size of N into S. 
that is if there are uh, n degrees of fr uh, freedom and if there are s number of support excitation uh, then the the displacements that will be caused at the n sub non support degrees of freedom that will be represented by a matrix n into s many a time we are not interested in all the response quantities uh, say a only a limited number of response quantities uh, may be involved for example uh, in this problem uh, we uh, consider uh, that this is a frame subjected to uh, two ground excitations different ground excitations arising because of the uh, time lag and uh, there are five degrees of freedom in the system that is non support degrees of freedom then h omega matrix will be equal to a 5 by 5 matrix now say we are interested in only the response x1 and x4 in that case the we can have a reduced frequency response function matrix which will be called h bar omega equal to 2 by 5 that is we can select the first row and the fourth row and make a modified h omega matrix called h bar omega matrix and its size will be equal to 2 into 5. Now, SXX now will be a 2 by 2 matrix because we are only interested in the responses x1 and x4. So, uh, the uh, diagonal terms of these matrix would give you the power spectral density function of 1 and 4 and the off diagonal terms will give the cross power spectral density function between 1 and 4 and 4 and 1. So, that is uh, what the SXX matrix will represent and it has uh, the same uh, equation as that of 4.77 that we had just discussed that is H M R S X double dot G then R T M T A star T only in place of H uh, star and H we write now H bar and H bar star where H bar is this uh, modified frequency response function matrix. And if we uh, put the sizes of different matrices here uh, we can see that uh, this finally leads to this multiplication finally leads to a 2 by 2 matrix uh, which would be uh, the size of the uh, matrix SXX. So, uh, in many problems what we do is that we uh, may not be interested uh, in all the displacements or all the response quantities and uh, for that uh, we uh, take a reduced frequency response function matrix and, and use the same equation that uh, we have stated over here with the help of equation 4.77. Now, the equations that I had shown before or in the previous slides, uh, they have been obtained or derived uh, with the assumption of ergodicity and that we did purposefully because it is easy to understand this relationship by assuming the stationary process to be ergodic uh, because in that case we will be dealing with only one time history and with the help of the Fourier transform of that we can construct um, all that relationship. However, uh, all the relationship that we have uh, derived in the previous slide 
they can be uh, also derived without the assumption of ergodicity that is by assuming the process to be a stationary random process and in that case what we will do is that we will start with the autocorrelation and cross correlation functions of the process or of the two processes and then take a Fourier transform of them and uh, using that we would come to all the equations uh, that you have derived before. And we had seen before uh, that there exists a relationship between the autocorrelation function and the power spectral density function through a Fourier transform pair. Now, let us solve a problem of multi degree um, or multi point excitation system that is uh, example 4.2 uh, if a time lag of 5 seconds is introduced between the supports find the PSDF of U1 and U2 that is uh, the problem. This problem in this problem we can now assume that uh, the x double dot g1, x double dot g2 and x double dot g3 are different and there is a time lag of the 5 second uh, between these excitations. So, uh, the time lag between x double dot g1 and x double dot g3 is 10 second x double dot g1 and x double dot g2 is 5 second and x double dot g2 and x double dot g3 is 5 second. So, these are the time lags. Then first we have to construct S x double dot g matrix that will be a 3 by 3 matrix of the ground motion and the diagonals of this would be the power spectral density function of the excitations at this point, at this point and at this point and the cross power spectral density functions uh, would represent the cross power spectral density function on between this excitation and this excitation and so on. So, this is the SX, do, SX double dot G matrix a 3 by 3 matrix. So, if we have to construct that matrix then let us uh, uh, recapitulate what we uh, discussed in the seismic input part of our study. In the seismic uh, input if you recall we discussed about a coherence function and one of the form one of the empirical equation of the coherence function which is a very simple one uh, is this that is exponential of minus absolute value of r i j into omega divided by V s, where r i j is the distance between the point i and j that is at these two points we have excitations and uh, the distance between this is r i j. The V s is the seismic wave velocity. So, is the same earthquake train or uh, ground motion or time history of ground motion that is traveling with a uh, velocity of V s. In that case one can replace R i j by V s by the phase uh, or the time lag that is R i j divided by V s is equal to the specified time lag that is the time that will be required uh, to travel from i to j if the velocity is v s. Now, this has been specified that is between the supports the time lag is 5 second. So, in this we can replace this quantity r i j by v s by 5. Now, uh, once we have done that then coherence function between the first support and the third support will be equal to exponential of minus 
this quantity will be 10 second into omega. Similarly, between the support 1 and 2 that is uh, uh, this support between 1 and 2 you will have 5 second that means Rij by Vs will be replaced by 5 second and x, x double dot g2 x g3 will be again by 5 second. So, one can construct a the matrix uh, easily because the cross power spectral density functions between the supports are now known. The, the this cross power spectral density function is given by this equation. Uh, if we recall the seismic input that we uh, discussed, and uh, this is the power spectral density function at support i, and this is at support j, and it will be multiplied by a coherence uh, function c o h i comma j. And since this is known now, one can obtain the different cross power spectral density function very easily. Uh, in the case of a, um, a single earthquake ground motion, train of a ground motion moving with a velocity, the power spectral density function at different supports uh, uh, remains the same that is equal to S x double dot g that is which is specified. Uh, only the change or the cross power spectral density function arises because of the coherence function. So, we write down the cross power spectral density a function between uh, the two excitations i and j as coherence i comma j into S x double dot g. So, uh, in this particular fashion one can uh, write down all the cross power spectral density function terms. Uh, note that S x double dot uh, g and x double dot g i uh, that is the cross power spectral density function between j and i is equal to cross power spectral density function uh, between i and j. This happens in this case because uh, uh, S x double dot g is a real quantity, there is no, uh, no complex uh, quantity involved over here and since they are real quantity the uh, star that you had used in defining the relationship between the uh, cross power spectral density function between point 1 and 2 and point 2 and 1 that uh, star uh, is not required and therefore, uh, they become the same. Now, with the help of that uh, we uh, obtained the power spectral density function matrix of excitation that is given by uh, this matrix. The R matrix we had computed before for this problem. The R matrix was 1 by uh, 3 into 1, 1, 1. And uh, this coherence function we have used, uh, uh, sorry in the, in the previous discussion I have simply written it as V s, it will be 2 pi by V s and, and uh, the values of rho 1 and rho 2, they are 5 omega by 2 pi and uh, 10 omega by 2 pi. So, with that values of rho 1 and rho 2, uh, one can obtain the cross power spectral density function matrix of excitation. So, this is the cross power spectral density function between the uh, support 1 and 2 and this is between support 1 and 3. And uh, we have taken S x double dot g a single quantity a common uh, out of them uh, because uh, a single power spectral density function is defined for the ground motion and the excitations at different points vary because of the phase lag. So, uh, this becomes a power spectral density function matrix and uh, this is the R matrix. So, therefore, with the help of uh, these and the H matrix one can obtain the power spectral density function matrix between uh, of u 1 and u 2 these two displacements 
and uh, the diagonal terms of that matrix gives you the PSDFs of U1 and U2. So, they are plotted here and uh, the plot again shows that the maximum value occurs around the first fundamental frequency of the structure and uh, the values of the or the RMS values of the responses becomes equal to 0 0.0089 and 0 0.0045 for U1 and U2. So, this is the PSDF of U2. Uh, the time history analysis that we obtain uh, for the El Centro earthquake, uh, note that the power spectral density function input uh, uh, that you have given here uh, is the power spectral density function uh, of the El Centro earthquake, which is uh, tabulated at the end of uh, the book uh, as an appendix one can use uh, those digitized values. So, we have used those digitized values for obtaining this uh, the power spectral density function ordinates at different frequencies. So, uh, when we obtained uh, we took the same uh, L centro earthquake as a time history and we did a time history analysis for the monthly support excitation system with a uh, time lag of 5 seconds between supports we obtained the result as 0 0.0092. So, that was the uh, value of the RMS value of the response that we obtained from the time history and the uh, spectral analysis give the result at 0 0.0089. So, you can see that the results are very close to each other uh, that verifies or validates uh, the uh, accuracy of the result. Uh, we solved another problem uh, which was a problem of the pitch roof portal frame uh, that is uh, we had uh, a pitch roof portal frame if you recall and uh, uh, there is a, a degree of freedom here and a vertical degree of freedom 5 and this is uh, a, having a multi support excitation and this uh, multi support excitation here uh, uh, they are two multi support excitations. The time lag between uh, these two points is given as 5 second that is R i j by V s that becomes equal to 5 second. So, one can have a correlation coherence function. Uh, with uh, rho 1, rho 1 defined as exponential of minus phi omega by 2 pi. So, with the help of that we can construct the 2 by 2 power spectral density function of excitation. S x double dot g again is the power spectral density function of the L centro earthquake that we have taken and uh, with the properties uh, of the pitch roof portal frame that is the mass matrix defined as this and the K matrix defined as this. We obtain the two natural frequencies as 5.58 and 18.91. The alpha and beta that was uh, calculated with the help of these two frequencies were 0 0.431 and 0 0.004 and this was the C matrix that you constructed and the R that you determined before uh, that is the influence coefficient matrix. So, with these matrices defined we again used the same equation uh, for finding out the, the power spectral density function of displacement 4 and 5 uh, and uh, using that multiplication of AMR and uh, R m and h omega star so on, uh, we obtained the power spectral density function uh, matrix of the displacement that was a 2 by 2 and uh, results are compared for 
to two cases that is in one case we assume that it is perfectly correlated and in other case we assume that there is a phase lag of 5 uh, second. The results which are given over here is uh, not correct. The correct results are shown over here in this paper uh, that is the RMS value that was worked out for this displacement and this displacement was 0 0.0331 when it was fully correlated that is there was no time lag between these uh, two points and when they were partially correlated that is there was a time lag between the two the uh, RMS value of the response was 0 0.023. So, one can see that uh, when there is a for fully correlated ground motion that is for the single support excitation the response is more uh, compared to when it is partially correlated. For uh, the displacement uh, 5 the when it was perfectly correlated the value was 0 that is expected because the uh, these two supports would be moving um, as a single unit that is it is a, it becomes a single point excitation system and in the, that case we expect that the there will not be a vertical motion uh, over here the entire thing would be vibrating in this particular fashion. And uh, the uh, for uh, when it is partially correlated, so there is a uh, little bit of displacement that occurs uh, at the crown. So, uh, this shows the importance of the uh, correlation between the excitations at the two supports. Uh, if uh, we assume it to be perfectly correlated that is we assume it to be a single point excitation uh, system then in some cases uh, we can get uh, some erroneous uh, result for certain degrees of freedom. Uh, it is better to consider uh, the partial correlation uh, between the excitation produced by the single earthquake. Uh, traveling at a certain speed. However, uh, this kind of thing needs to be done only for cases where the two supports are uh, spatially separated by a large distance. For small distances, uh, this particular partial correlation effect of partial correlation is almost negligible. Though the power spectral density uh, function matrices are uh, or the, the, the power spectral density function matrices are shown over here and one can see that the uh, frequencies at which it is peaking is nearly equal to the frequency of the, uh, the or the first frequency of the system. Now, for here uh, these uh, the power spectral density functions they differ a little bit for the case of uh, uh, with time lag and without time lag and uh, that is shown over here this is with time lag and uh, for without time lag there was only one peak whereas uh, with time lag there are two peaks in the power spectral density function. Uh, next uh, let us uh, come to the absolute displacement that is uh, how to obtain the power spectral density function of absolute displacements of the responses. Whenever we have a multi support excitation system uh, we have seen that uh, there are two displacements uh, that uh, one need to consider that is a relative displacement of the non support degrees of freedom with respect to the support 
that is called the relative displacement. The other one is the absolute displacement in which the total displacements at different non-support degrees of freedom are considered. Uh, the, it is necessary because uh, uh, if we wish to find out the member end forces, uh, then we require the relative displacement of one end with respect to the other in terms of the total displacement uh, for a multi-support excitation system. For single support excitation, uh, the, since the same displacement takes place due to the ground motion at all supports, uh, therefore it is only the relative displacement uh, that is good enough to obtain the uh, member and forces from the displacement. Now the absolute displacement can be written with the help of this equation that is i into x plus r into x g. So, uh, if we look at this uh, expression over here, the i is a matrix of identity matrix that is uh, diagonal terms are 1, 1, 1, of diagonal terms are 0 that multiplied by the three displacements u uh, that gives the relative displacements of the system and uh, the ground displacements are x, uh, x g 1 to x g 4, therefore ground displacements and therefore we have a R matrix which will be 4 by 3 R matrix and when it will be multiplied by this x g vector then we will get the influence of these displacements coming on to this non-support degrees of freedom. So, the influence of this at these three degrees of freedom plus the displacements that is caused at these three points because of the vibration of the structure with respect to the support that is given by this addition of these two becomes the absolute displacement or the total displacement. Now once we have this uh, equation, then using that equation one can write down the power spectral density function matrix of absolute displacement with the help of this equation. Uh, this becomes SXX itself because this is an identity uh, matrix and uh, therefore uh, the i and i t of that if I multiply with SXX it remains SXX itself. Uh, this uh, becomes R into SX double dot G into RT then uh, SX X double dot G that becomes or x g that becomes equal to i s x g r t and s x g x that becomes into r into s x g x i t. Now what is not known to us this is known to us s x s is known to us from the dynamic analysis of the system s x uh, g that is also known because we know the power spectral density function matrix of the ground acceleration and uh, from that power spectral density function of ground acceleration one can find out the power spectral density function of the displacement. Uh, and this relationship we had uh, shown before that is S x double dot g is equal to omega to the power 4 into uh, S x g. So, there exists a relationship between the power spectral density function of ground acceleration and the ground displacement. So, using that relationship one can find out S x g if S x double dot g is specified. Now, here this is the term cross power spectral density function between the response that is the displacement and the ground displacement 
that is to be obtained and once this is known this SX A matrix is completely known. Now, one can write down the relationship between the x g and x from uh, the relationship that exists between this that is s x omega is equal to minus h m r x double dot g omega. So, uh, this is a basic equation that we write if we recall for the single degree of freedom system we have written x omega is equal to h omega multiplied by p omega. Okay. Now, here uh, uh, the p omega is equal to uh, m into r and uh, h is the h matrix. So, x omega vector is related to x double dot g vector that is the ground acceleration vector with the help of uh, this relationship. And uh, once we have this relationship then, then x double dot g omega further can be written as omega square multiplied by x g omega that follows uh, from the relationship basic relationship uh, that exists between the uh, ground displacement and ground excitation if they are assumed to be a harmonic excitation. And for harmonic excitation whether we represent it in the complex form or in the real form we know that uh, the displacement and the acceleration are related uh, through omega square. So, that is why this x double dot g omega is replaced by omega square into x g omega. And once we have this relationship that means this is equal to this x omega then from this I can easily get uh, the cross power spectral density function between x g and x and x and x g. So, uh, here it will be of course, there will be a since it is a matrix uh, there will be a, a complex conjugate of transpose. So, that star is missing over here. So, with the help of uh, um, these relationships that is once we know s x uh, g x and s x g. Uh, then one can obtain the value of the power spectral density function matrix of the absolute displacement. So, we stop at this, we will solve a problem uh, in the next class. Mm -hmm.